Hey everyone, and welcome back to Unfamiliar. I'm Pen, and I will be your host on this adventure. So, I've decided this is going to be the last time I play this. This is definitely, there's not a lot of new content anymore. So I think it's probably for the best if we do one more, unlock what we can, and continue from there onto something new. Because right now, most of what I have to do is just grow plants, which it, it's taking a while to do. So yeah, let's... Get this started, shall we? Alright. Right. I've been letting Sarah play this. Uh, and even with Sarah playing it, I have not got a lot uh, collected. It It's definitely holding up to its name where it's like a... No rules, you, you do things at your own pace. No stress, completely chill gameplay. Um... So it's doing exactly what it promised, it's just, I don't know, I feel like the content is gonna get stale if I do any more, so, yeah, let's see what we can get while we're here, though. That. So, um, how's everybody been doing at the moment? I have been hella busy. Um... We have had a bit of an issue with um, a couple of taps leaking really bad in the garden and then the grass got really overgrown um, so I've been mowing almost every day to try and get that back down to a normal level and oh my god my body is so stiff <laughs> if you ever need to um, get a good full body workout mow, the, mow long grass trust me it's, it's definitely up there, um, for like, non-fitness junkie type exercise, you know. Just chill, I need to get housework done levels of exercise. Do, do, do. I hate this corner, I always get stuck on it. Alright. So, what have I been up to? Um... Not much, really. Uh, I've been really wanting to ghost hunt, but I don't have a license and it's not really anywhere close by, which has been really sad. And for some reason, uh, our house has ghost activity. Like, shit gets moves. You see people walking through the house, disembodied voices and footsteps, like all of the good shit. Tapping, knocking, creaking, um, Stuff getting smashed and knocked over, even when there's like no one there. Um, but whenever we pull out the ghost equipment, they're not interested. Everything goes quiet. It's really sad. Um, I definitely think the last place I lived was a bit more haunted than this one. Um, in the last place I lived, uh, Angel, my youngest brother, um, they uh, had an issue. They, We had a, a ghost who didn't like a lot of loud noise at night. Uh, they always got really shitty if we were loud at night. So during a birthday party for my child, they acted up really bad. Like A lot was going on. And Angel decided it would be a good idea to wander into the kitchen and trash talk the ghost, which blew the light directly above them. The light bulb, gone. The uh, fixture, broken. We had to get it fixed. Um, they cried and had to go home. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't expect that kind of reaction from that ghost, but... It was it was interesting. It was a, a very eventful evening. Um, we ended up not doing not letting Angel do anything like that again. We had no idea that uh, anything that severe would happen, and I, like it happened so quickly that no one had the time really to react to what he was doing. And yeah, that was what five years ago? Four years? No, yeah, four years ago. So 
he's um always had a bit of anxiety around ghosts since. Uh, can't imagine why. It's great though. It's it's great um for the storytelling, and it did give them some extra wall. Uh, it just isn't um great in the moment. <laughs> it it was pretty terrifying. I'd never had a ghost reaction like that before. I thought that was stuff only for movies, honestly. Now I'm a little bit more uh, aware of being respectful of ghosts. <laughs> a little bit of um, research goes a long way, and a little bit of respect, honestly. Yeah, don't don't trust your ghosts. It's bad. Up here. Um, beyond not getting to do much ghost hunting, I don't know, I've done much. I've been watching uh, Buffy with Angel. He hadn't seen that before. So, um, that's gonna be something that hopefully is a starter of something, like a routine for us. We enjoy watching TV together. At the moment it's Buffy. I'm hoping we can get into watching a bunch of other stuff as well. I get so many old shows and and um, my sister doesn't really appreciate them, so Angel does. So hopefully he um, will, will continue to watch them with me because I like watching TV shows and showing new people like the, the good stuff. I'm not a huge fan of the uh, producer and director, um, was it Joss, Joss Whedon. I'm not a huge fan of them. But the um, the show's good. There's a lot of really good actors in it, so I I definitely respect the talent. It, it's very well written, very well um, acted. It's just sad that some people were treated inhumanely in that process. Uh, d -d -d nope, not this way. Just trying to think. What else am I doing? Oh, I'm I'm building a uh, a D and D game for for my friends. It's a, a from the ground up D and D campaign, like with my own rules. I've got to make a rule book and and all of this stuff. It's gonna look really cool. Uh, it's um, a Pokemon D and D campaign, and it's like I feel like it's gonna be pretty unique in the way it's played. And I'm hoping um, if I do a good enough job on it, and it, it grows enough, like in its development, uh, I can do a really good job, and it, it seems fair and, and and it runs smoothly, then. I may end up actually bringing it online as well. That could be really fun. Oh, there's Casper. Yes, please. What does Casper look like? Oh, he's like... Ch there's chunks of him missing. Cute. That's kind of cool. And the stitches just kind of float there in the neck position. Okay, let's see. Cat towers. Oh, crossing. I do not have enough. Can I craft any of them? Nope. Guess we're just doing cats today. What's this? Flapjack? Oh, cute! The Siamese, right? Okay. Next one. Peel. This looks like an orange cat. Oh, he's green. Wait, no, he's orange. What? <laughs> He's kind of an interesting color. Okay, let's see who do we have left. We got Jonesy and Bib Bibby. Okay, 
Okay, let's see what Jonesy looks like. Now that's an orange cat. Hello. Cute buddy. Used to have an orange sharpie cat like this. His name was Springtrap. Him and his, his brother Mangle used to be inseparable buddies. Um, we don't have Springtrap anymore. He went missing like three years ago now. I still have Mangle though. He's, he's old and sweet. It was, it, I definitely was a lot more emotional at the time. I think I'm doing a lot better now than I was. Um, but yeah, it, it was sad to see that he just didn't come home. Um, I miss him, but I think I've kind of like gotten comfortable with the fact that he's either out there living his best life or not out there anymore at all and I know that's kind of sad but you know it it is what it is and Mangle is so loved dearly so as much as I miss his brother it, his, he is not being treated badly at all You got a lot of hacks, oh my god. It's an alicorn and a halo to do yet. Oh, Sarah's gonna love the fact they're gonna be able to dress their cat up as a unicorn when they play this again. <laughs> halo. Okay. See, do we have anything else? Ooh. Oh, I want to go like that. Interesting. Got that one. And a candy cane. Okay. Some star beads. I'm actually getting a lot of this a lot of this done it just a lot of these things need specific plants grown and it, it takes forever to grow them this thing I still haven't found the crystal to make it I can make this though okay let's see I don't know what I need or if I need anything specific. Uh, no, I don't want to make that. Let's see. Ooh, a Neapolitan jelly. And a star wand. Should probably make another one of those if I can. I don't know what this is, but I got it. <laughs> okay. Nothing there. Nothing there. Huh. Okay. Well. I guess we'll do another walk. We probably won't be able to unlock anything else, but we'll see. Let's see what we can do. Oh, I forgot to change my character. Oh well. Yeah, with the the D and D thing though, um, I've actually had to do a lot of research on on Pokemon and D and D to to make it all make sense. Uh, it's not like a um, Pokemon in a D and D world. It is. It is designed to be played like a Pokemon game, but the rules and decisions and plot is dictated by D&D rules. Um, that, that's how we're doing it. So, with the classes, um, 
we're turning the classes into career paths. So somebody who's like a ranger would be able to have a career path of say a rancher or um, a hunter or something like that. Um, and like they all make sense. If you're a blacksmith, you're probably a barbarian. If you're um, a doctor, you're probably a wizard. Uh, you know, it, it it's not a cleric. I mean, if you're a scientist doctor specifically like a researcher then you're a wizard but yeah it's going to be along those so that we know what stats go where uh what talents people have things like that and we will i will be making special perks for people um there's a whole bunch of things i've got so much planned and it's going to be so much fun um but I had this unfortunate thing happen where my computer died while I was actively designing and building stuff, which has been a bit of a bummer, but I'm hoping to be able to get all of my stuff off of there and put it on my new computer um, so that we don't have to worry about that anymore, you know. This way. Um, yeah, there's this really cool premise, um, I can't give away too many spoilers because I know that some of the campaigners watch my channel, but it's basically that the, the characters all wake up um, with no memories of themselves because some cataclysmic event happened because of some Pokemon uh, and it erased their memories and the whole journey through uh, the region will be realistically the character's first experience of the region because they have no memory of it um, which is going to make the, the original, like the first campaign playthrough of that scene more natural um, and then you know, if I want to allow them to play in that region again, it'll make sense, oh well we already kind of know the, the area we know what's going on it'll feel a bit more comfortable the second time around but I want there to be room for error and room for confusion uh, and I figured that was the best way amnesia is kind of cliche but uh, what causes it will be a callback to um, a Pokemon episode which is going to be really cool and there's going to be a bunch of other callbacks um, this is going to be a bunch of other silly references. I've got a companion character that hilariously looks like Dora the Explorer. And they, um, <laughs> their name is Sora, which is supposed to be on the nose. And their, uh, companion Pokemon will be a A-bomb. Uh, it's going to be Pokemon Ranger rules where you have to befriend the Pokemon and have them... Um, travel with you. There's no Pokeballs in this world, so you can't catch things. Um, you have to befriend them, which will make it a bit uh, harder, because they won't be able to just immediately throttle uh, making a team for themselves. Um, and I feel like that that's going to make it a bit easier. There's going to be gyms and stuff like that of I've been working on characters for the gyms. I've got all of the gyms picked, the Elite Four picked locations. I've built a map. It's a very basic map, but it is a map. Um, I also have like regional Pokemon decided, events decided where they are. Even if the the players don't go where they're supposed to, the events will still happen. And then they'll have to deal with the repercussions of not going the way they were supposed to and not helping the people they were supposed to, which I think is really funny. Um, kind of dumping the blame on them just a little bit, just, just, just to uh, tease. I, I think that's kind of funny to me. I, I, it, it's amusing. Uh, so that's the idea, it's just to fuck with the players. 
um, make it feel like a Pokemon game, but also more realistic. Uh, and yeah, just really experience D&D. &D. Because I've only ever played it, I think I did like five sessions. And then I realized, no, I'd much rather be a DM than a player. <laughs> um, I don't like uh, the fear of my characters dying. <laughs> so, you know, the, the anxiety and the uh, PTSD affecting me when I was playing as a um, player was not pleasant. It would, became too stressful and anxiety ridden. So I feel like being a DM is going to be different because um, I get to, I can decide, you know, if I want them to die or not. And I don't have to fight for um, my life or anything because the whole point is for these characters to die. You know, I'm, I'm designing these characters all to be killable. So, I'm not going to have that fear of, oh, I need to keep them alive, you know. Um, I don't know if anyone else gets that way. It gets the, the pit of anxiety in their stomach when they're playing. But uh, if you do, you're not alone. I do too. It's awful. I hate it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely excited to be a DM. I have been writing stories my whole life I have so much good content that I can delve into just to make the story more dramatic and exciting uh, and twists are easy I have so many ways I can just anticipate things to go I'm really good at like predicting movies and TV shows and I know my friends pretty well so I know a lot of the ways they'll try and fuck with me Things like, oh, there's a big boulder there. Well, I can climb over the boulder or just climb up the cliff and we can get the Pokemon to help us. But jokes on them, there's like high level Pokemon just conveniently roaming that area right as you're doing that. And maybe you should turn around. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's also things like, hey, maybe don't poke around in this haunted mansion too soon if you if you find a secret base, you're gonna get arrested by the people hiding in there, um, and they're gonna take your Pokemon, and then you'll have to try and get them back. <laughs> It'll be that kind of stuff, you know. I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of things planned, a lot of hidden things planned. I'm d building things into the maps that I know will pique people's interest. Um, it'll be like, hey, what's that? Can I go touch it? And then have it be booby trapped or something. Just just for the fun of it. <laughs> and, uh, oh, Pokemon and players can die in the campaign. That's, that's one of the things I really liked to keep in. Is everything can die. Because, you know, uh, what is more traumatic than potential um, character and Pokemon death? I feel like Pokemon death would be much more traumatic. If you're the trainer and you survive and your Pokemon died for you, I feel like I would be devastated. <laughs> um, and there's big consequences for fucking around and not following the plan. Uh, if you don't follow the story, the story will continue to move on even though they didn't. I have a day counter because of specific creatures that spawn on specific days or in specific locations or specific times of day um, and so I need to keep track of that anyway so keeping track of what day it is and what's going to be happening in the world on, on specific days um, will be interesting like are they going to arrive before an apocalypse during an apocalypse or after an apocalypse and have to clean up the mess <laughs> and I'm leaving larger than needed spaces between so obviously if they get there earlier I can then um, truncate the time a little bit but that that's what I'm working with I'm I'm really I like planning things out at really deep levels so I feel like the the Pokemon campaign will be interesting 
and I, I don't know if I'll record it. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about recording it and then maybe at least showing highlights. I'm not sure though. We'll see. We will see how people feel about that. So, do I have anything I can make before I go? Ooh, I can! Mrs. Pops! Okay! Ooh, they look like rainbow ice cream. Nice. That's yummy. I love rainbow ice cream and Sarah's gonna love Mrs. Pops. She's cute. That's, that's adorable. I love that. It's holographic. Holographic ice cream cat. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah. Can't make anything else. Okay. Well, I guess on that note, I'm going to end this here. And I'll pick it up in the next video. So for now, if you enjoyed this, Please subscribe and join the embarrassments, which is what I call my community. And also, you can get this game on Steam if you want to play it for yourself. Um, it is, this is the full game. This is all there is. This is the whole point of the game, is for it to be relaxed and chill. So if you like that and you like games that are just collecting things and not really much variation, uh, it's good for like watching TV with and stuff like that, then definitely give this game a try. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.